Would you go with me to prayer this morning? Heavenly Fathers, we come this day where we lift up Barry Frelix, Lanay and his family. You know the reason why they're not here. We ask you, Lord, to heal them just, Lord, as quick as possible. May he not be tested and find a, he has to be quarantined or anything of such of that nature. But Lord, I pray he'd get a good report. He'd be back here where he needs to be. But Lord, we just lift him up to you this morning. We ask for your guidance on each and every one of us. We pray, Lord, this message will be everything you meant it to be. And we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It's good to be at Highland here with you this morning. I, I don't like the circumstances, and you don't either. We thought we was over all this stuff. But you know, as you search in the Bible, you find out in the Old Testament, I believe it's in Leviticus, it talks about uh, things that's going to happen. This COVID is not the last thing that's going to happen. We just have to pray and seek the Lord's guidance and use a good judgment about what we do. Some people will not wear a mask. We've had folks at Solid Rock that wouldn't wear a mask to church. They said they just didn't, they wouldn't come if they had to wear a mask. And I wasn't trying to be cruel, but my thought was, what little do we have to do compared to what Jesus did on that cross. So, if I have to wear a mask to church, I'm going to be in church, if at all possible, and I'm going to wear that mask. If I go to the doctor's office, I'm going I'm to wear a mask because they require that. But that's about uh, the extent I hope to have to wear a mask. You know, some people wear it inside their home. I have a friend that is telling me that there was in the Dollar General the other day and this fellow said, why are you wearing that old mask for? And she just came right back at him. She said, it's my business what I do. If I want to wear it, I'll wear it. <laughs> he didn't know what to say. I don't think he said anything after that. But uh, it is good to be here this day. And I'd like to encourage you, uh, if you don't have anything to do tonight, we have a, what they call movie night the first Sunday night of each month at Solid Rock. And we've got a uh, movie called Greater. You may have saw it. Uh, it's about a football player. It's a true story. It'll bless your heart. If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. If you hadn't and, and you don't come down there tonight uh, and you get a, a copy of that, watch it. it. It is a blessing to see a young man come to know the Lord and stand up for what he believes in. That said, I want to tell you a story I heard uh, here recently. It said this little old lady came to the preacher one day and she was crying and said, Preacher, said, my little dog has died. Oh, I just love that little dog so. I thought so much of him. And Would you preach his funeral? The preacher said, Ma'am, said, I'm sorry for your loss, but we just don't do pet funerals. Oh, but I'll be glad to pay you, she said. He said, ma'am, we just don't do pet funerals. And she said, do you believe, uh, he told her first though, he said, you go down there to that other church, I won't call the name, he said, you go down there to that other church and say, they'll probably do it for you. She said, oh, do you think they would do it for $500? He said, lady, why didn't you tell me that dog was a Baptist? So as a, I got that from Shonda Pierce on the little tape that she had and everything. And uh, I'm not a joke teller, I mess it up, but still, I like seeing people laugh. And, and, uh, and it ought to be a joy to come into God's house. The preacher told a little boy, he said, son, said, you can wake up your grandfather now. I said, the service is over. 
The little boy looked up at him and said, you wake him up, you don't want to put him to sleep. <laughs> so just a, a couple of things right there. Uh, I'd like to ask you this morning to turn your Bibles to John chapter 4. I'd like you to begin our look here this morning. Lord, just help me. You know what needs to be said. Lord, don't let me say anything you have not said. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. John chapter 4, verse 35. And I ask you to stand in the read of God's word in honor of him. The harvest is now. He said, Say ye not ye that there are four months and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. And he who reaps receives wages, that uh, both he who sows and he who reaps may rejoice together. And here again is that saying true. One sows and another reaps. And I sent you to reap that whereon you may bestowed, you bestowed no labor. Other men labored and you have entered into their labors. Thank you. You may be sit down. People say, well, we have a lot of time. I don't know how much time I've got. I don't know how much time you've got. I did not realize yesterday when I got up, we went to work at a church member's uh, place in, in ill health, and uh, it really needed some attention. There it was kind of snaky. It hadn't been cut. Uh, grass had not been cut, and things like that. We went over, and when I got, before I got home, I called Pat, and she said, Brother Barry called you, for you. And I said, I'll call him when I get home. So I got there and I talked to him. and He was just, I don't know, really, really sound, sound so bad that, you know. And we thought we were over all this. We didn't think it was going to happen. But today, more than ever, we need to pull together, be strong together, the songs that you sang this morning, I won't ask anyone to raise a hand, but do you sing in the morning until the evening comes? You say, bless the Lord, oh my soul. You know, The Lord blesses us when we, we're not ashamed of Him and we, we do the best we can at whatever we do to praise His name. There's a passage of scriptures here in John chapter 4 and it speaks of the Samaritans in that city. And he said, that, in verse 39, he said, Many of the Samaritans in that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, said, He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were coming to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them. And he abode two days, and many more believed because of his own words. And said unto the woman, Now we believe, because not because of your saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that this is the indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. I read that kind of backwards there, because uh, you know that story about the, the Samaritan woman and Jesus coming to the well that day. About midday, they said, and the woman, the Samaritan woman, she came there to draw water. I've heard others say that she came about midday because of the other ladies were there earlier at the time, and, and, and she had, they gave her such a rough time because of who she was. You've read the story, and you kind of know it. If you haven't read it lately, let me uh, encourage you to read that fourth chapter the book of John. But Jesus, he came there, and, and Jesus being wearied, 
he said, uh, with his journey, set on, thus on the well. In verse 7, he says, there come a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus said unto her, give me to drink. His disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then said the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that you, being a Jew, ask drink of me, which, I, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If you knew the gift of God, and who it is who says to you, Give me the drink, you would have asked, and he would have given you living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From where do you get to live in water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, which gave the well and drank thereof himself and the children and his cattle? And Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinks of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into life everlasting. It goes on in that story, but Jesus, he, he, uh, he tells us about what he did and, and he thirsted. And there's a, a song that, I don't apologize, I'm not a singer, but the Lord, when he, we do the best we can with what he gives us to do and praise his name. And I'm so glad he takes it differently than, uh, that maybe other, other people will. You know, they make jokes like, what did you do with that money mama gave you? You say, what money? That money you should have had to go to singing school or something like that. But it don't matter how you do it, it's what comes in the heart that counts. And there's a song that's been on my heart and I've had it wrote down for some time. It says, I thirst. He said, one day I came to him. I was so thirsty. I asked for water, my throat was so dry. He gave me water that I never dreamed of. But for this water, my Lord had to die. He said, I thirst, yet he made the rivers. He said, I thirst. Yet he made to see. I thirst, said the king of the ages. In his great thirst, he brought water to me. And there's a river that flows as clear as crystal. And it comes from God's throne above and like a river it swells up inside me bringing mercy and life giving lust King Jesus he said I thirst yet he made the rivers he said I thirst Yet he made the sea. I thirst, said the king of the ages. In his great thirst, he brought water to me. And that thirst meant salvation he brought. By dying on Calvary's cross, he made it possible for every man, every woman, every boy and every girl on the face of this earth to be at home with him forever in a place, to be with him in a perfect place. You know, we stop and think about a perfect place. Where would be the nearest perfect place that is on this face of this earth? I'd like to think it would be my home. It's not perfect, but I'd like for it to be as close to perfect as possible. And I'm sure you do as well because... A home is a place where we go and when the world may have beaten you down and things are happening and you just get so tired and so 
needed help, needed strength. You go home, and when you're at home, you get that strength there. We've been talking about cluster revivals for the last few months, and Brother Barry, he may have brought information to it, but I let him decide we've got, uh, I think, three clusters, about uh, 10, 11 churches is going to start meeting in September. We're going to have a, uh, a rally for Christians to come together to praise the Lord on the 12th of September and uh, up on the square at the courthouse there on the north side of the square. But as I read this scripture right here, there's many people that don't have time for Jesus. They don't have time to spend possibly even an hour a week to worship Him. They, they have other things to do. I have some in my family that don't have the time. And I pray for them each day. And I know the Lord will answer that prayer at some time. I don't have to see it. Because faith is a substance of things not seen. You don't have to see it to have faith, but I know it's going to happen. You may be in the same way. You may have family members that, that don't see the need to come to church. One day, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess Jesus is Lord and Savior. He said, every, those that worship Muhammad, those that worship Buddha, those that worship anything other than Christ, one day, every knee is going to bow before Jesus Christ. And the saddest words that he will ever have to say is depart from me for I never knew you. Do you know him today? And you may say, well, that's a crazy question to ask folks in church. I don't think so because we can have head knowledge of Jesus. We can know a lot of the scripture. But what, what do you know him? It's in your heart. He's, he's there in your heart. He's the one that convicts when you're going to do something. If it's not right, the Holy Spirit will speak. And no, I don't need to do it that way. He does that. But we're living in a day of thirsty land. And I thought about, as I was writing that down, and people would say, well, you've been thirsty. We've been having rain galore. It's been raining. I'm talking about spiritual thirst. I'm talking about people that don't have time for, for Christ. They don't have time to, to do this or that. When the church has activities, they choose what they want to do, and they don't, uh, they don't necessarily uh, do that because... Well, 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 we've got, all churches have got it, I'm sure. We've got folks on Sunday morning that uh, will be there. We have a wonderful Bible study on Wednesday night, each Wednesday night. And some don't never show up for Wednesday night. I don't know why. I just put it this way. That's between them and God. That's not a Dale's business. I'm not going to, I'm not going to uh, be, they're going to have to account to me, but they're going to have to account to him one day. And we know the plan of salvation. We know it so well. You know, you talk about Romans, the Roman road to salvation. But today I want to ask you, have you lost the joy that you had when you first got saved? You remember the first time that you got saved, the first day, the first Sunday, maybe that you were baptized. Does that recall a time when you you recall a time when you, you came before a living God and, and you said, Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner, like the publican did. Be merciful unto me. You remember when you came to him and you said, Lord, if you'll only do this, I will do that for you. It's, a, it's a, uh, uh, kind of a combination there. If I will do, then he will do. Second Chronicles seven fourteen says, If my people which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then, he says, then, we'll hear from heaven. We have to come before him. Humbleness is, is a, a character Jesus had. 
And if we strive to live like Jesus, we need to be more humble in our, in our daily walk in life. For we never know who we're going to come in contact with. We never know with how the devil is going to use something to not help somebody else, but to hurt somebody else. People do it sometimes without even realizing it. But in Romans 3.23, you know, you know all, it says all of sin comes short of the glory of God. All, that means me, it means you, it means everybody. I strive to, to live a better life today than I did yesterday, but somehow along the line, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. In Romans 6, 23, it talks about the wages of sin. You go to work each week and, and you receive a paycheck for the, wa the wages for you get. But the wages of sin is death. And sin, and it's not death like you're dying from this body and they're buried in the ground. It's death without Christ. It's death. It's hell ever after. Preachers don't like to preach on hell because they don't want to upset people. Blood is not mentioned as much as it used to be years ago because it upsets people. But without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Without Christ dying on that cross, I'd have no way. You'd have no way to enter into a place called heaven. But because of his dying on that cross, him coming and dying for our sin, you know, somebody might say, well, you know that old fellow over there, he's not much good for anything. And we have a tendency to say, well, this person here is better than this and him over here. But you know, every one of us, every one of us is so precious because Jesus died on the cross and he didn't die for nobody, he died for everybody. We're, pre we're precious in his sight. When he gave up that, <coughs> that precious blood, when they nailed him to that cross, and he hung there, and he died, and they placed him in that barred tomb. It was a barred tomb because he didn't need it for very long. You're already ahead of me there because in three days he, he was going to be a he rise out of that tomb. Three days he, he came back. He came back. In Romans chapter 8, it talks about there's no condemnation for those who's in Christ. You're not condemned, but before a person comes to Christ, they are condemned. They're condemned to a devil's hell because they don't know Christ as Lord and Savior. I said before, and I like to say again, I don't try to preach to please people. I want to preach the word that God gives me that will please Him, and He'll take care of the rest of it. Sometimes people might get upset about the preacher's message, but let me tell you what. If he's going to be faithful to God, he's going to preach it. He loves you so much, he's going to preach it the way God means for him to, and, and, and let the Holy Spirit, let God let him take care of it. Turn right back with me to Matthew chapter 11. And uh, look at verses 28 through 30. He says, come unto me. It's meant by Jesus to reveal himself as the giver of salvation, of course. All you who labor and heavy laden, is trying to earn salvation by works. It don't work. And I'll give you rest. And this rest can only be found by placing one's faith in Christ and what he has done for us at the cross. Take my yoke upon you. The yoke of the cross, Luke 9.23 speaks of. And learn of me. Learn of his sacrifice in Romans 6, 3-5. For I am meek and lowly in heart only thing that our Lord personally said of himself, I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. The soul can find rest only in the cross. Only in the cross. For my yoke is easy, my burden is light. How long has it been? How long has it been since we made that deep surrender to Him. 
I look around and some of you I know and I've known for a long time. Are you still as excited about Christ as you were when you first came to Him? Do you remember when you prayed and maybe stayed awake half the night and you couldn't hardly wait to get to church on that Sunday morning and when the invitation is given, you came down that aisle on the first stanza of the song that they were singing, Just As I Am or Amazing Grace or whatever the song may have been, but you was ready to come. You, you, was, you was ready. And you come up and you took that preacher by the hand, that pastor by the hand, and said, by my coming, I want to... I want to acknowledge Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I have asked Him to forgive me of my sins. Remember that time. And have we ever let up? Have we ever been less, have we ever lost a joy in serving Him? For I believe in churches a lot of times people do different responsibilities in church. Sometimes not because they're led, because, but because this position needs to be filled. We don't have nobody else to do it. And, and if you don't do it, I don't know who's going to do it. How do you know that? Well, back years ago in the association, I was the Brotherhood Director two years in a row. I was Brotherhood Director at First Baptist Church about that same time. And when they came up at third time, but, oh, you're going to take this position. You're going to do this, aren't you? I said, no, I'm not. Well, why? Because I'll be taking it for the wrong reason. The responsibilities we have in the church should be a joy that we enjoy doing rather than a burden that we have to bear because somebody else won't do it. How long has it been? How long has it been since you made that commitment to the Lord? And if you're like me, I failed Him in so many ways. I failed my family in so many ways. But one thing about Jesus is this. When you come to Him with a broken heart, he will mend that heart and it will be much better than it ever has. You have a need here today. I don't know of a church on the face of the earth that says, well, we don't have any needs. I've heard people say, well, we don't, need, we don't have no money need because we got all the money we need. We can do this and we can do that. The need I'm talking about is that spiritual need. You may be blessed with a, with a large bank account. You may be blessed with a lot of material things on this earth, but how well are you blessed with the, with the Spirit of God living deep down inside you? When, when you say something, you have to say, Lord, I am sorry for what I said. I catch myself doing that almost every day, every day probably. And you say, well, what, what do you do when you, if you hit you? Thumb with a hammer or something like that. Oh, what do you say? I hear people say, oh, uh, I said a few Sunday school words. Have you ever heard them words in Sunday school before? No, I didn't think so. Sometimes the flesh, it rears up. Sometimes the flesh. But they would say, Lord, please, please forgive me for what I've done, for what I said. You know my heart. He knows your heart this morning. He knows just what you need. He knows us so very well that even a sparrow can fall on the utmost part of the earth. He knows all about it. He knows every hair upon your head. I've heard preachers jokingly say, yeah, and he has fewer fewer to count now than he did before, didn't he? He knows us that well. He knows what's inside of us. He knows what we really need. What do you really need today? If it's a financial need, you need more money to pay the bills. If it's a health issue, you might need a, a good doctor to go to or a, a, him prescribe a medicine to help you do this or that. But a spiritual need, what do you need? I need to come back to where I 
was once before when I had so much joy overflowing. People look at you, they say, they see you smiling all the time, they say, what are you up to? What are you up to? Let me tell you what I'm up to. I don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds today. I'm not worried about the future because he's got the future in mind. He knows where we're going to be. When every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, that time it will be too late. The thief on the cross, one said, Lord, remember me when you come into your paradise. Jesus said, today you shall be with me. The other said, well, if you're so powerful, you get yourself down and get us down. He's looking for the uh, uh, immediate need right then. Temporary need. How many of you cook with a microwave oven? How many of you stand there and say, hurry up! <laughs> that thing's on, I, I hit coffee and water up about a minute and a half, and, and sometimes I'm, hurry up, you know. We don't rush things like that. You do, but the water's not hot. You put instant coffee in it, yeah, it don't taste good. But anyway, we have a need. And when we recognize that need, Lord, I came with a need today. If you get on an airplane, you're going to take a flight, and you get on an airplane, you've got so many bags or so many pounds of luggage that you have, and if you have over that, they charge you for excess baggage, don't they? How, many ex how much excess baggage do we bring into God's house? We don't want to share it. Somebody else might tell about it. How much? What would it take for you to come to Him and give 100% of yourself? Now, maybe you're doing that already, and if that's the case, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to somebody that don't do that. But what would it take? He don't have to die on the cross. He's not going to die on the cross anymore. He's coming back as the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings. They're not going to spit on him anymore. He's coming back. He's coming back. We don't know when this life is over. Every time that heart beats, it's because of God. He gives it another time to beat. And he knows just exactly when the last time will be. Now, you can be hooked up to a mechanical thing at the hospital. And I've heard so many people say in the past, well, they're not really living on their own. They're living because of this machine. And I'm not here to tell you to do that or don't do that. I'm just simply saying, when we breathe our last here on earth, I pray that each of us will breathe our first in the glories of heaven. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I pray you're pleased with the message. Lord, I pray that those that might have a need today, whatever the need may be, I pray especially for those who do not know you in a personal way, that you would come and they would come, Lord Jesus, and say, Lord, please forgive me for the sinner which I am. Lord, you're right and I'm wrong. It helped me be more like you. And Lord, I just want to thank you right now in faith, believing that someone you've touched through this message, not of me, but Lord, you spoke through me and a, and a person got something from that and they need to come and they need to, they just need to come before you and say, Lord, please forgive me. For it's in Jesus' precious name I humbly pray. Amen. Thank you.